Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve question number 6 to question number 10 of CBSE class 10 examination 2022-23 section A that is multiple choice questions where each question is of one mark. Now you can find the solutions to question number 1 to question number 5 of the same question paper by clicking on the link above. Now the sixth question is from the introduction to trigonometry chapter. If two times tan A is equal to 3, then the value of 4 sin a plus 3 cos a over 4 sin a minus 3 cos a is. Now let us concentrate on the given hint. It's given that 2 times tan a is equal to 3. So let us take 2 on the other side of the equal to sign. So we get tan a is equal to 3 divided by 2. Now once we have got this, let us divide each term in the numerator and the denominator by cos a. So we have 4 times sin a divided by cos a plus 3 times cos a over cos a divided by 4 times sin a over cos a minus 3 times cos a over cos a. So you can see here each term in the numerator and the denominator is divided by cos a. Now why did we do this? As we know the trigonometric ratio sin a over cos a gives us tan a and we have the value of tan a as 3 over 2. So in the next step, we can substitute in place of sin a over cos a, tan a. And here we can see that cos a and cos a divides each other. So cos a from numerator divides the cos a from denominator. Same thing happens over here. Cos a from numerator divides cos a from denominator. And we get 4 times sin a over cos a is being replaced by its trigonometric equivalent tan a plus 3 times 1 divided by 4 times tan a minus 3 times 1. Now here let us replace tan a with its value that is 3 over 2. So here we have 4 times 3 over 2 plus 3 divided by 4 times 3 over 2 minus 3. So let us simplify this now. 2 from the denominator divides the 4 from the numerator. So 2 1 times 2 2 times. The same thing repeats in this denominator. So 2 1 times and 2 2 times. So we are left with in the numerator 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 plus 3 is 9 divided by 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. Now we can divide 9 and 3 that is 3 1 time and 3 3 times gives us 9. So here we get the value of this expression as 3. So our option is going to be C that is 3. Now let us move on to the seventh question. The seventh question is from the polynomials chapter. If alpha, beta are the zeros of the polynomial p of x equal to x square plus x minus 1, then 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta equals 2. So in this question, a polynomial expression is given. And from this, we have to find out what could be the value of 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. These are the zeros of the given polynomial. So let us begin by writing the polynomial in the standard form. So the standard or general form is p of x equal to ax square plus bx plus c. a is the coefficient of x square. So by comparison, we can easily say that a is equal to 1 and b is the coefficient of x. So again here it is going to be 1 and c is the constant. So here in this expression, we have the value of c as negative 1. Now once we have got the value of a, b and c, let us write down the relationship between the zeros and coefficients of the polynomial in terms of sum of zeros and product of zeros. So here we have written equation of the quadratic polynomial is equal to x square minus sum of zeros times x plus product of zeros. And once we have written this, we know that sum of zeros that is alpha plus beta is equal to in terms of coefficient it is minus b over a. And here we have found out the value of b and a. So let us just substitute here. So minus b is 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 is 1 itself. So we get negative 1. So we have found the sum of zeros. Next let us concentrate on product of zeros which is alpha times beta. And in terms of coefficient it is c over a. And c value we have here as negative 1 over 1. So again we get the product of zeros as negative 1. Now once we have found out the value of alpha plus beta and alpha beta, let us look at this question where they have asked us to find the value of 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. So let me write here. So 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. So let us multiply 1 over alpha with beta. That is 1 times beta and alpha times beta. And beta with alpha. That is 1 times alpha 
and beta times alpha. So in the numerator we get 1 times beta is beta plus 1 times alpha is alpha divided by the denominator is same that is alpha beta alpha beta. So we are going to write it as alpha beta. Now beta plus alpha or alpha plus beta both are same and we got the value of alpha plus beta as negative 1 and alpha beta we got it as negative 1. Now the minus from the numerator cancels the minus from the denominator and we are left with positive 1. So this is the value of 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. So here our answer is going to be option A that is 1. Now let us move on to the 8th question. Now the 8th question is from the quadratic equations chapter. The least positive value of k for which the quadratic equation 2x square plus kx minus 4 equal to 0 has rational roots is. Now first of all let us write down this given quadratic equation in its standard format. So 2x square plus kx minus 4 equal to 0 is in the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Now by comparison we can say that the coefficient of x square that is a is equal to 2 then b is equal to k and finally the constant c is equal to negative 4. Now once we have got this let us find out what is the condition for rational roots of quadratic equation. Now the condition states that the discriminant d that is b square minus 4ac should be greater than 0 and it should be a perfect square as well. So let us begin by substituting the value of a, b and c in this given discriminant formula. So we have in place of b square k square minus 4 times a is 2 times c which is negative 4 it should be greater than 0. So simplifying this we get k square and minus of minus gives us plus and 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 times 4 is 32. So k square plus 32 is greater than 0. Now the second condition is it should be a perfect square. So we have to choose the value of k in such a way that this entire expression becomes a perfect square. Now let us begin with the option a. Option a is given as plus or minus 2 root 2. But in the question they have asked us the least positive value of k. Since in this option there is a negative number as well, we can completely discard this option. The same thing happens in option c as well because it has plus and minus 2. Now let us concentrate on option b which is 2 and plug in the value of k as 2 in this expression. So we have 2 square plus 32 is greater than 0. So 2 square is 4 so 4 plus 32 is greater than 0. So 4 plus 32 will give us a value of 36 which is a perfect square and 36 is also greater than 0. So both the conditions are satisfied. Now let us check with option D as well. So the same thing we are going to do that is we are going to plug in the value of k as root 2 and let us check. So we have root 2 square plus 32. So here this should be greater than 0. Now root 2 square is 2 plus 32 is greater than 0. But 2 plus 32 gives us 34. Now 34 is greater than 0. The first condition is satisfied but it is not a perfect square. So the value of k cannot be square root of 2. So here the value of k has to be 2. So here the option is b. This is our answer. Now let us move on to the ninth question. The ninth question is from the introduction to trigonometry chapter. 3 over 4 tan square 30 minus 6 square 45 plus sin square 60 is equal to now here tan 30, sec 45 and sin 60 are the standard angles of the trigonometric ratios. So we know their respective values. So let me write it over here. So the value of tan 30 degree is 1 over root 3. Now sec is the reciprocal of cos. So here I have written sec of 45 degree equal to 1 over cos 45 degree is equal to 1 over. Now the value of cos 45 is 1 over root 2. So here the 1 over root 2 flips upside down and we get the value of sec 45 as square root of 2. Then finally we have sin 60 its value is square root of 3 over 2. Now we have to just plug in the values of these three angles in the given expression. 3 over 4 times tan square 30 is being replaced as 1 over root 3 the whole square minus sec square 45 is root 2 square plus sin square 60 is root 3 over 2 the whole square. 
now let us simplify this so we have here 3 over 4 times 1 over root 3 square so the square of the square root the square root disappears so we are left with 1 over 3 minus square of square root 2 gives us 2 plus now square root 3 square is 3 and in the denominator 2 square is 4 now here the 3 from the numerator and 3 from the denominator divides each other and we are left with 1 over 4 minus 2 plus 3 over 4 so let us take a common denominator now that is 2 over 1 multiply the numerator with 4 and denominator also with 4 so we get here 1 minus 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3 and we get a common denominator as 4 so here we get 1 minus 8 is minus 7 plus 3 gives us negative 4 over 4 so again dividing this we get the final answer as negative 1 so the value of the given trigonometric expression is negative 1 and it is option A in our question. Now let us move on to the 10th question. The 10th question is from surface areas and volumes chapter. Curved surface area of cylinder of height 5 cm is 94.2 cm square. Radius of the cylinder is. So here we have to find out the radius of a cylinder. So let me draw the rough figure of a cylinder first. So this is a cylinder whose height is given as 5 cm and the radius needs to be found out. Since the curved surface area of cylinder is given, we know that its formula is 2 pi r h where r is the radius and height of the cylinder. Now the value of curved surface area is given that is 94.2 and height is also given as 5. So let us substitute here. So 94.2 is equal to 2 times pi is given as 3.14 times radius times the height is 5. Now let us take r on one side of the equal to sign and rest of the numbers on the other side. So we get r is equal to 94.2 divided by now I multiplied 2 and 5 together so I got 10 times 3.14. Now here let us simplify this further. So 94.2 divided by 10 times 3.14 gives us 31.4. Now since the decimal places of the numerator and denominator have become same it becomes easy to divide. Now 31.4 divides 94.2 that is 31.4 1 times and 31.4 3 times gives us 94.2. So here the radius is going to be equal to 3 cm. So let us see if it is in the options. So here it is option B. This is the radius of the given cylinder. I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. If you know any other way of solving these examples, do comment below. And if you are liking my videos, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.